4,300 years ago, the Akkadians of Mesopotamia forged the world's first empire. They seized control of the cities along the Euphrates River and on the fruitful plains to the north, all in what is now Iraq, Syria and parts of southern Turkey. The first enemy that put first ancient empires like Sumeria, Akkadians and even Babylon to its knees was climate change more specifically, desertification across the region. Desertification has been described as the greatest environmental challenge of our time, and climate change is making it worse. Each year around an area three times the size of Switzerland is lost to the shifting sands of the world's deserts. While the term may bring to the mind windswept sand dunes of the Sahara or the vast Australian outback, it's an issue that reaches far beyond those living in and around the world's deserts threatening the food security and livelihoods of more than 2.5 billion people. The combined impact of climate change, land management and unsustainable freshwater use has seen the world's water scarce regions increasingly degraded. This leaves their soil less able to support crops, livestock and local wildlife. Arid, semi-arid and dry subhumid areas are collectively known as drylands. These are that receive relatively little rain or snow each year. In simple terms, the amount of rainfall the area receives is between 5 to 65 percent of the water, and it has the potential to lose through evaporation and transpiration from the land surface and vegetation. Any area that receives more than 65 percent of the water is referred to as humid, and it's mostly Europe tropical areas like Amazon, Central Africa, and East Asia. If you look at this map where the world's drylands are located, drylands encompass around 40% of the world's land area, covering much of North and South Africa, North America, Australia, the Middle East and Central Asia. Drylands are home to approximately 3 billion people, 90% of whom live in developing countries. Drylands are particularly susceptible to land degradation because of scars and, and variable rainfall, as well as poor soil fertility. So almost 40% of the Earth's land surface is at risk of becoming a desert. There are numerous ways in which the land can degrade. One of the main causes is by erosion, the gradual breaking down and removal of rock and soil. This is typically through some force of nature, such as wind, rain or waves, but can be exacerbated by plowing, grazing and deforestation. The direct causes of desertification can be broadly divided between those relating to how the land is managed, like overgrazing of livestock, overcultivation of crops, and inappropriate irrigation. For example, plants and grasslands must die biologically to regrow itself again the next season. And when the livestock eats up all the grass from the land, so the ground opens up and becomes susceptible to sun's UV lights and oxidation. So the carbon escapes the ground to the atmosphere and the fertile soil dies. As a matter of fact, there is more carbon resides in soil than in the atmosphere and all plant life combined. There are 2,500 billion tons of carbon in soil compared to 800 billion tons in the atmosphere and 560 billion tons in plant and animal life. So desertification is a much more serious threat to the environment than fossil fuel companies and chemical industries combined, as the 40% of the land surface is at risk of becoming a complete desert. And yet almost nobody is talking about this threat. Storing carbon back in the soil is simple, it's a matter of returning where it belongs, to the ground. So in this video we will talk about natural desertification, human-made desertification, and how to reverse it and even terraform lifeless deserts to forests and grasslands. Beyond affecting land and the natural environment, land degradation poses serious threats to agricultural productivity, food security, and quality of life. Nowhere is this issue more urgent than in Sub-Saharan Africa, where an estimated 500 million people live on land undergoing desertification. The Sahara Desert is the largest in the world, has grown by 10% since 1920. So in just 100 years, a fertile area equivalent to the combined area of Germany, Great Britain, Norway, Ireland, Cuba and Denmark is lost. It's mostly due to combination of natural climate variations, reduced rainfall and global warming. A series of complex climate cycles affect conditions in the Sahara like, for example, the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, a natural climate cycle that changes the Atlantic Ocean from warm to cold phases every 60 to 80 years, and can impact rainfall patterns across much of Africa. For example, Lake Chad in the Sahel region which used to supply fresh water and livelihoods to nearly 30 million people has shrunk by 90% because of desertification and lack of rainfall. On top of that, Global warming, overgrazing and mismanagement of land accelerated the expansion of Sahara. 
So in Africa, scientists are hard at work restoring land once rich in biodiversity and vegetation. 11 countries and the African Union have joined to combat desertification and restore native plant life to the local region. And it's called the Great Green Wall of Africa. This Great Green Wall, an expanse 15 km wide, starts from Dakar, Senegal, and stretches all the way to the east 8,000 km to Djibouti. The most interesting part, they are planting drought-resistant acacia trees. So these tree roots hold water in the soil after rains. As a result, even dried up water wells in Senegal have filled up again. It has been almost a decade now, only 15% of the project has finished. And still, it has shown remarkable results. For example, in Ethiopia, 15 million hectares of degraded land restored. To put it into perspective, 15 million hectares is bigger than Belgium, Netherlands, Switzerland and Denmark combined. So that was the huge success for Ethiopia. And in Niger, 5 million hectares of land restored delivering additional 500,000 tons of grain per year. That's enough to feed 2.5 million people. And other countries have also shown progress, not to mention millions of tons of carbon absorbed from the atmosphere back to the soil. The most shocking part of this project that it's relatively cheap. Only $8 billion are needed to complete the whole project. And ever since, it's only been spent $1.4 billion. Generally, $8 billion is incredibly cheap considering the magnitude and the impact of this project on both to the local and global environment. To put that into perspective, the US military budget for the year 2020 is $715 billion. Imagine if only 10% of this sum is used to restore the environment, but unfortunately, that's just a dog barking at the moon. The expansion of Sahara is the combination of both natural cycle and human-influenced climate change, but there are places like Mongolia where desertification is completely human-made. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Mongolia established its own democratic government. Unemployment was high and the most lucrative business was domestic herding, as Mongolia exports cashmere, meat and wool. Since 1990, livestock numbers have gone from around 15 million to 66 million in a country where population itself is only 4 million people. Overgrazing by millions of sheep and goats is the primary cause of land degradation in Mongolian steppe, one of the largest remaining grassland and ecosystem in the world. The Mongolian desertification not only poses a serious threat to the local ecosystem, but it will contribute to the global climate change as well. About 79% of the country is considered grasslands, so the amount of carbon in the soil is enormous. In recent years, it was found that 12% of the biomass has disappeared in Mongolia. 12%? That's more than the twice the size of Texas and 70% of the grassland ecosystem is now considered degraded, which means it's dying and in the process of becoming a desert. Overgrazing of livestock accounts for about 80% of the vegetation loss, another 20% is the climate change effect. If desertification persists in this country, the amount of carbon released in the atmosphere would further accelerate the global warming. Desertification is constantly happening in most developing countries, including one of the biggest one, India. The government of India has finally started thinking about the consequences of deforestation in its region. Inspired by the Great Green Wall of Africa, they are planning to restore the rapidly shrinking green area in the country. They are planning to create 1,600 km long and 5 km wide green ecological buffer along the Arwali range from Gujarat to Delhi. So as you might have guessed, it's also called the Great Green Wall of Arwali. So in 10 years, 1.3 billion new native trees will be planted to rehabilitate the local forest. These green walls mainly act as a buffer that might stop deserts from expanding, but there is only one way to actually reverse desertification where degraded land becomes a grassland and a forest. This only option is a plant grazing by mimicking nature method developed by Alan Savory. As livestock is the main cause of desertification worldwide, in this particular method, as counterintuitive as it may sound, livestock is actually used to both to stop desertification and start afforestation. So this solution works by moving livestock to a degrading grassland and move without letting them overgraze. As in wild nature, big herds of animals will not be at the same place for a long time because of predators and constant threat. So this method actually mimics nature. For example, you let one big herd of livestock into a degrading area, they will graze for let's say for an hour or so and they will immediately move to the another area. 
So what will be left in the area are plants and grass that are laid back and covering the soil from the sun, protecting carbon and nutrition escaping the ground. Additionally, feces and urine of livestock will play as a natural fertilizer. Once the soil is protected, its biomass will become stronger and suck more carbon from the atmosphere to the ground. After some time, the ecosystem will diversify with different plants and trees. Alan Savory did an actual experiment in Zimbabwe and in Mexico, where he moved a big herd of livestock to a desertifying land for plant grazing. After some time, the results were spectacular. Plant life has returned to a degrading area even though the number of livestock has increased by 400%. If we do this mimicking nature method to world's drylands, it's estimated that the soil will suck so much carbon that it will take greenhouse levels to pre-industrial level, simultaneously feeding hundreds of millions and even billions of people in developing countries. Well, desertification is happening in the US as well. About 40% of its region is on the high risk of becoming a desert, even though overgrazing is not the main problem. I have a theory on this. Huge herds of American buffalo used to roam the whole North American continent for thousands of years. They moved quite often fearing from predators, so naturally, all these years, they have kept the soil protected. Now they are nearly extinct and the greatest risk of desertification in America is 8 out of 10. This mimicking nature method is actually the only natural and legitimately tested way to stop desertification, curb global warming and potentially the single biggest solution to climate change that nobody is talking about. And it doesn't need a huge budget or anything like that, but only strategically moving livestock mimicking nature along with dying areas for plant grazing. And I think this can be the game changer in the fight against global warming. Well, thanks for watching, please share this video and support the channel on Patreon. I have been working on a few video projects that are going to be released soon. I will be releasing videos quite often now, so please subscribe, not to miss upcoming episodes, and hit the like button if you genuinely liked the video. If you haven't liked it, comment down below so we can peacefully discuss.